Have you ever wanted to follow a creative career path or become a full-time artist? You know that art is what you've always been good at and what you always wanted to do deep down in your heart. But even though you're serious about your work, something is holding you back. You're worried that the creative career path isn't a safe or secure option and that if you decide to pursue it, you won't be able to provide for yourself and your family and you will have to give up having a stable income or a sustainable career path. Plus, you're convinced that only the top 1% of artists actually make a living from their art. And you're constantly telling yourself that you're not talented enough to make it to the top. Like so many artists, you've internalized all those hurtful comments from teachers, friends, and family members who told you over the years that there's just no money in art and that you should grow up and find a real job or choose a more sensible career path. If any of this sounds familiar, you've probably fallen for the myth of the starving artist. And in this video, I'm going to show you four ways that the starving artist way of thinking might be holding you back from realizing your worth as an artist and from following your creative dreams. Because so many things you've been told about following a creative career path are not only false, but actually pretty harmful to the art community. If you're not already familiar with me or my channel, I'm a professional artist and as an artist, I've been asked more times than I could count how I manage to support myself and to make a living. That's because we are so conditioned to believe that artists make very little money or no money at all. Before I decided to go full time with my art, I experienced every limiting belief under the sun. But even though everyone said it was a bad idea, I decided to believe in myself anyway. So no matter what people were telling me about the life of the starving artist, I knew that one way or another, I was capable of creating a career out of the things I truly loved doing. Because I just refuse to believe that there's only one way of living this life. And over the last almost 10 years, I've taught thousands of people to rediscover joy in their life through painting and crafting, and I've made my living doing it. I'm not saying all this to brag, but to show you that if I can do it, then you can do it too. Trust me when I say that. Artists just like you can and do make a living from their art and they get to have fun and pursue their passion every single day while they do it. Here's the thing, the starving artist stereotype is not only completely false and misleading, but it also wasn't created with artists' best interests at heart. There's a great quote by Jeff Goins, the author of Real Artists Don't Starve, and he says, sometimes in life, the script we are given no longer fits the story we want to live. We realize the rules we were following were assigned by someone who did not have our best interest in mind. My goal is to help you question and reframe some of the limiting beliefs you might have right now around making money as an artist so that you can decide for yourself whether the creative career path is for you. So if you're ready to discover how you can stop being a serving artist and create a flourishing creative career path instead, keep on watching. First of all, what is the starving artist stereotype anyway? We've all seen examples of the starving artist in our favorite books, movies, and TV shows. You can probably think of one of the top of your head right now. The typical starving artist hops from one friend's couch to the another, working a temporary job such as waiting tables when they need to make ends meet, or relying on financial support from wealthy family members. They eat, sleep, and breathe art, and sacrifice any kind of comfort or financial stability while they do it. This struggle is the price they pay for success later in life. This stereotype has become deeply rooted in our culture and society, and anyone who's ever thought of pursuing a degree or career in visual arts has come across it in one way or another. It's become almost a rite of passage into the industry. And even though the world has changed so much over the last hundred years, 
it still shows up all the time. Like any stereotype, it does have a grain of truth to it. It's true that a lot of artists have lived a challenging lifestyle, worked odd jobs, or lived in poverty in order to sustain their art. There's no denying their financial struggles. But a lot of artists don't settle for living this way and use their creative talents and skills to make a very good living. Some of the most successful artists in the world sell their paintings and sculptures for millions of dollars and live just as luxuriously as celebrities. The problem is that the starving artist is the romanticized option, while the successful artist is often labeled as a sellout. Which brings us to the first way that the starving artist stereotype harms artists. It makes you believe you have to choose between meaningful work and having the means to live. The starving artist stereotype makes us believe that money and creativity are polar opposites of each other and that you can't have both at the same time, at least not while you're starting out. Many beginner artists who do want to create meaningful work are faced with a difficult decision. Should they continue pursuing their art professionally or give it up for a safer career path that brings in a steady income and allows them to satisfy their needs? Seems like an unfair choice, right? This all relates to the unfair misconception that a real artist doesn't do it for the money, they do it for the love of their craft. But let's be honest, even if I love every second of what I do, it still doesn't pay for my groceries or my electricity bills or all the art supplies I have to buy in order to do my job. Not getting paid for my time and skills would not make my art any better. It would just make me worry about where my next meal would come from and how long I could afford to keep doing what I'm good at. Worrying about your basic human needs takes a huge toll on your energy and mental health. If you think about all the famous artists of the ancient world, such as Leonardo da Vinci, for example, you'll remember that many of them had wealthy sponsors who looked after their food and accommodation, as well as any spending money they needed. These artists needed to be in an environment where their needs were taken care of so they could create their masterpieces with peace of mind. Money is the reason we see their work in museums and galleries all over the world today. And when it comes to creating for the love of the craft, it's true, it's an absolute privilege to do something you love for work. But it's no different for artists than it is for any other profession, such as nursing or accounting or flying a plane. Even though so many artists identify with the starving artist label, it actually keeps them stuck in their comfort zone, afraid to dream bigger or seize opportunities that are right within reach. They continue to lower their prices until they can't afford to pay their bills and then they give up and feel discouraged. If you've ever worried that making money from your art will mean selling your soul and giving your creative freedom to the corporate world, you're not alone. But the truth is money doesn't change who you are, it simply enhances it. If you know that you want to help or inspire people through your art, then money will only help you to reach more people that you can help. If you make it your mission to create meaningful work that inspires and helps people, then having a little more spending money won't change that. And you'll be able to sleep easier as well because trust me, you can stay true to yourself and keep your creative freedom while respecting the monetary value of your work. And you shouldn't have to choose between fulfilling work and putting food on the table. Your work is worthy and valuable, and you deserve to be fairly compensated for it. Which brings me to number two. The starving artist stereotype makes you question your value in society. Everybody wants their work to have value. We all want to be useful to our community in some small way, to play our part in society and to help people wherever we can. But the starving artist stereotype makes artists feel as if their work isn't important to anyone but themselves. Sure, we don't build houses or do open heart surgery, 
but we still create art that brings people joy or makes them feel something they didn't feel before. Think about the last time you went to a gallery or saw a concert, which might have been a long time ago now, I know. Chances are you left feeling inspired, learned something new, and had fun. You found value in the experience. And that's exactly what artists do. They create valuable work. But because this work is often enjoyable, it doesn't fit neatly into the starving artist stereotype that says you have to suffer to make money. This is another limiting belief. So many of us have grown up hearing that we have to work hard in order to make money. But very few people see painting or designing or illustrating as hard work. That's because they usually only see the beautiful finished piece rather than the years of practice, determination, and failed attempts it took to get there. I've seen a lot of artists and craftspeople hesitating to share their work on TikTok or Instagram lately because they are afraid that people will undermine the value of their work when seeing a 30 seconds clip of a 6 or even 12 hour process. They know that for every 100 people who understand the amount of time and skill it takes to produce a piece of art, there will always be someone who questions its value and tells them that they could have created the same thing in 5 minutes and that it's way too overpriced. Comments like that can really sting, especially when you're still figuring out how to translate your time and creative energy into a price value. I mean, if something takes a lawyer 5 minutes, nobody questions their fee or asks them to do it for free and yet this is a really common thing for artists to hear. Not only does this create an unfair sense of entitlement for artists' time and skills, but it also makes artists themselves feel as if their work isn't worthy of financial compensation. So often they lower their prices or leave the art world altogether, opting for a real job in something that drains their energy and probably doesn't even match their skill set. If you're in that boat right now and you're weighing your options, I promise it does get easier. The truth is the fear of charging money often comes from a fear of not being good enough and feeling like you're not worthy. We all have that voice in our heads that tells us you're not talented enough or smart enough or experienced enough to excel at something. And when it comes to our art, we can be really protective and not want to show it to the world for fear of being judged. And because we are not 100% sure of the value of our art and ourself, we often think that other people won't see the value in it either. As a beginner who has only ever created things for fun, it's hard to imagine that someone will ever pay you for your work, especially when you start to compare yourself to other artists who are much further down the path than you are, or if people start questioning your prices. But stick with it, because everybody starts somewhere. There's always someone who would love to buy your art or anything that you have to offer, and they will gladly pay whatever you charge. So set a price that you know is right, instead of one that feels low enough to sell. Because when you value yourself and the value you provide, other people will do that too. Seeing the value of your work is not just important for yourself, but for other artists as well. If everyone stays scared of, what if everyone will say it's too expensive? What if no one will want to buy from me? And they keep the price low or even lower them further, all the artists will feel like they have to do that as well. If you believe in the value that art brings to the world, you have to start valuing your own art too, no matter how long you've been practicing. That way, everybody gets to benefit. The next way the starving artist stereotype is holding you back might feel pretty familiar. It makes you question whether you are really serious about your future. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I was obsessed with art. It was always my favorite subject in school and one of the only ones I was really good at. But whenever I brought home a good grade on my latest art project, I got questions like, what about that math test? Have you been studying for that? Because math and science were seen as the serious subjects, the ones that would get you far in life. But when it came to art, 
my family pretty much hoped that I would eventually grow out of it and move on to something more sensible, maybe following their footsteps as engineers. Even though they believed in me, I think they fully expected me to realize one day that there was no money in art and it was time to find a real job with a stable salary and an office cubicle. Maybe you have a similar story or maybe your friends and family fully support your choice to pursue your creative passion. But overall, it's no secret that society treats arts and humanities more like hobbies than serious career options. You've been fed a very clear message by our parents, teachers, and the media. Aspiring artists are just not as serious about the future as students of science are. It's not true, of course, but it's the reason why a lot of really talented young artists get discouraged and don't pursue their creative dreams. Maybe they continue painting or sculpting or drawing in their spare time, but the world doesn't get to see their work because they don't believe they could ever be good enough to make money doing what they love. And the world is massively missing out. Besides, almost every business needs artists and creatives to photograph, design and present their work in the best possible light. Every time we see a billboard or scroll past an ad, we are seeing the work of people who are educated in their arts. Even the most corporate companies you can think of probably have an in-house design team or regularly hire creative freelancers. We often forget that these are artists too. And when it comes to taking the safer route and opting for a more sensible career path, does that even really exist anymore? The world of work has changed so much over the last few decades. Many traditional career paths are starting to fade away with the new roles cropping up all the time. You can work remotely from anywhere in the world now. There are more opportunities out there for artists than there have ever been before. Creative skills can be used in so many different ways, especially these days when you can teach yourself pretty much anything through online courses and YouTube videos. You could be a painter, branding designer, typeface artist, or a mix of all three and do it from the comfort of your home studio. Your possibilities as a creative person are endless. You just have to be willing to spot them. Which brings me to number four. The starving artist stereotype makes you see art as a hobby, not a business. Despite what the starving artist believers might lead you believe, you don't just have to go the traditional way by creating a few art pieces every year and selling them to gallery owners and art collectors. You also don't have to wait around to be discovered. We are really lucky because right now it's easier than ever before to get your art in front of people who want to buy it. So many artists are building super successful businesses through Instagram and TikTok simply because they are putting themselves out there and getting eyes on their work. They are showing their process and helping people to see the value in their work. And as a result, they are gaining commissions and customers and booking out wait lists for their custom pieces. You might not see yourself as a business owner and you may not want to consider your art to be products, but you still should market them to give yourself the best possible chance of reaching success, whatever that might look like for you. Using social media will help you find clients, gain commissions and keep people in the loop on your process. It might even inspire other artists to pursue their creative dream too. So if you really want to make this work full time, you have to shift the idea that your art is just a hobby and step up to become the professional artist you already are. Once you do, you'll start taking your art a lot more seriously and see a world of possibilities open up before you. In 2019, I spoke to a fellow painter, Jenna Rainey, who turned her passion into a very successful business, showing aspiring artists that it is possible to change the narrative, set aside your limiting beliefs around money, and expand the possibilities for what you can do with your art. I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below so you can check it out and see what Jenna had to say. There are so many options out there. You could 
work with bloggers, brands, and magazines, with art supply companies, sell physical or digital prints of your work, license your work to be used for clothing or other commercial items, or become a freelance graphic designer helping small businesses owners to market their brand in a bold and beautiful way. The list goes on, but the point is there's no shortage of options out there for artists who are willing to think outside the box, ditch the limiting beliefs, and have the courage to trust themselves and just go for it. It might feel scary at first, but pick up projects that challenge you, experiment with new techniques, and create for different types of clients. You get to decide that your art is your business and take it from there. Now to wrap things up, how do we beat the starving artist stereotype? It's simple really. As artists, we've got to be in it together. We have to lift each other up and value ourselves and our own work as well as our fellow artists' work. We've got to put our stuff out there for people to see, even if we don't think that it's perfect. Instead of romanticizing the outdated notion of the starving artist, Let's remember that creativity is such a marketable skill and there isn't just one type of artist career path out there. As long as you have a creative eye and stay true to your values, you've always find another way to make money through your art. Things have turned around for artists over the last hundred years, so let's make the most of it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're watching this video while procrastinating creating more art, make sure to keep an eye out for my upcoming video where I'll be chatting about another very common struggle for beginner artists, perfectionism and procrastination. I'll see you soon.